What's going on YouTube? Hayden back. Just when we thought things couldn't get any worse, they do. Now the latest CPI data or consumer price index showed that last month inflation in May reached its highest level since December of 1981 at 8.6%. And economists and analysts were only anticipating May to be at 8.3% tied with April's inflation rate. When this news actually broke, the S&P drastically stumbled downwards, officially declaring us in a bear market. Now that the S&P is down 20% from it's high, this is a sign that things are going to get worse before they get better. And if that's not enough proof, check out this Porsche making pizza deliveries. I don't know about you, but that's all the proof I need to believe that we're in trouble. So this means us investors need to batten down the hatches, stop spending unnecessary money, and get ready for what's coming ahead. Now the consumer price index that everyone is talking about measures the monthly change in prices paid by US consumers and is responsible for the inflation rate. Now the Bureau of Labor Statistics calculates the CPI as a weighted average of prices for a basket of goods and services that represents the aggregate U.S. consumer spending. Now, the more we as consumers spend while supply is low means inflation will continue to rise. And in order to fix inflation, we need to stop spending so much money. This is exactly why the feds are making it harder to borrow money by raising interest rates and making it easier than ever to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Now, by smashing the like button, it lets YouTube and I know that you want to see more videos like this and it recommends this video to people with similar interests as you, as well as curbing inflation. Now within the CPI, the three largest components are housing, transportation, as well as food and beverages in that specific order. And as we all know, these are the three categories that just can't seem to stop going up in price. Unfortunately, the surge in shelter, gasoline, and food prices all contributed to the major increase in inflation that we're dealing with today. Specifically, energy prices broadly rose 3.9% from a month ago, bringing the annual gain to 34.6%. And sticking within that category, fuel oil posted a 16.9% gain just last month, pushing the 12-month surge to 106.7%. Propane, kerosene, and even firewood are up 33.8%, and pipe natural gas that you get into your house to turn on your stove is up 24.1%. This now marks the national average for gasoline to $5 a gallon, up 60 cents from just a month ago. Now remember guys, just last year, gas used to sell for $3 a gallon, and here we are today at five. Now energy experts estimate that every penny increase in the price of gasoline cost Americans an extra $4 million a day. Although most people think that this has everything to do with the Russia and Ukraine war, which certainly does have a factor, don't get me wrong, there are actually many other reasons as to why the price of gas is going up so crazy. Now to deter Russia from going to war with Ukraine, the Biden administration banned Russian oil imports into the U.S. Crazy enough, we only get about 3% of our oil from Russia, and most of our oil actually comes from Canada, Mexico, and even Saudi Arabia. Only about 8% of our oil and refined products come from Russia, and just oil alone, and when you take out refined products, you only get about 3% of oil. Really, just banning oil alone from Russia is not the main reason why gas is surging so crazy. The main reason is that there really just isn't enough refineries that can turn oil into gasoline uh, and diesel and even jet fuel within the U.S. Tons of oil companies were forced to close their factories down during COVID to stop the spread and more closed down due to just little demand for gas during the lockdown as not many people were even driving. And even more today can't get the workforce they need to keep up with the ever soaring consumer demand for gas. What's worse is the high diesel prices are causing truckers to quit the industry by thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, thus further further driving the price not only up for gas because it can't be delivered back and forth, but for all other sectors in our CPI like shelter and food because if nobody's delivering it, it's going to become more expensive. Now shelter costs, which accounts for about one third weighting in the CPI, rose 0.6% for the month, the fastest one month gain since March of 2004. Now the 5.5% 12 month gain is the most since February of 1991. And finally, food costs climbed another 1.2% in May, bringing the year-over-year -year gain of 10.1% more for your groceries compared to last year. Now, meats, especially beef and pork, are up 20% higher than a year ago, 
bacon is up 18.6% from a year ago, and chicken is even up 11.5% from a year ago. And going out to dinner has also gotten more expensive, up 6.6% from December of 2020. And surprisingly, the only good news that actually came from the rise in food this year was that free lunch was actually offered to all public school children, regardless of their family's financial situation. Now, the U.S. Department of Agriculture announced last year that free meals would be available to all students during 2021 and the 2022 school year. Now, unfortunately, as the school year wraps up, that program will come to an end on June 30th of this year, adding another catalyst to higher food demand this summer as we see June, July, August, maybe September. Now, what's worse is it's still projected that 42 million people in the U.S. will experience food insecurity this year. This is a 20% increase from the 35 million people who didn't always have access to food back in 2019. Estimates even show that 13 million people who will experience hunger this year are children up from 10 million two years ago. Now, the biggest factor for CPI is housing and rent, which accounts for nearly one third of the CPI. And rent increased by 0.6% last month, matching the greatest rent squeeze since 1987. And since the housing market exploded in 2021, rent is now starting to catch up to the crazy housing prices and is currently up 15.3% since last year alone. Housing has even soared around 19.8% since last year. And guess what? Traveling isn't getting any cheaper either. Unfortunately, the problem is everybody wants to travel after the lockdowns two years ago, and even more people want to travel since they've adopted remote work in major corporations. And unfortunately, this really isn't helping the consumer demand index that we're trying to bring back down. Now, flight prices in May were up nearly 13% from the month before and almost 38% from May of 2021. Hotel prices increased only slightly from April to May, but are up 22% from just a year earlier. Yet again, this is another reason why we're seeing inflation continue to go up, consumer demand continue to go up, and the main people that are getting hurt by this is the middle class. Each and every time we see an increase in inflation, whether it's for food, gas, travel, or even housing, hourly workers take a pay cut. Real wages when accounting for inflation fell 0.6% in April, even though average hourly earnings rose 0.3%. On a 12-month basis, real average hourly earnings were actually down by 3%, adding to the great resignation. Now, there was a record 11.5 million job openings in March, while turnover remained historically high as 4.5 million people quit their jobs in search for better paying wages, to battle inflation, to work from home, so many other reasons. Now, employers unfortunately are having a hard time matching inflation in their employees' pay, leading to more and more people putting in their two weeks. Now, the great resignation truly scared employers since last spring, and this was when everyone actually started quitting their jobs to find remote work and to also avoid getting sick. Now, the reports from last month and March implied that it might be a while before people stop quitting. And while all of this is happening, news broke from the World Bank warning everyone of the possibilities of stagflation as flashbacks from the 1970s begin to grow. Now, in the 70s, we also saw oil soar, making the cost of living in the US almost unbearable for most people. Fortunately, today, though, we don't have to worry about this yet. But if the economy continues to have prices soar while the supply of goods continue to slump, this lack of growth can cause even higher unemployment rates, thus putting us in a period of stagflation. And for those that still need a little bit more clarity on stagflation, in simple terms, it means there is a persistent high inflation combined with high unemployment and low consumer demand in a country's economy. Now, sure enough, when the CPI data was released and revealed higher than expected inflation, the stock market took a massive hit, sending us into what's confirmed a bear market, and Bitcoin and crypto soon followed, falling to new 2022 lows. On Monday, June 13th, the wreckage didn't stop. The entire crypto market cap had fallen below $1 trillion compared to its high of $3 trillion, and Bitcoin even dropped 65% from its all-time high. This obviously sent Bitcoin's fear and greed index into the extreme fear category. And what's even crazier is on Monday, multiple cryptocurrency exchanges blocked users from withdrawing their funds, yet setting another fear into the market that even though you have cryptocurrency, which is descent, centralized, it doesn't mean you own it if you have it in an exchange or a brokerage. And what's crazier is the crypto lending company Celsius Network announced late on Sunday night that it would be freezing all withdrawals and transfers due to extreme market conditions. In other words, they don't have enough liquidity to back everybody getting scared and pulling their money out, which is something that we saw in the economy happen many years ago when people try to withdraw their
their money from the banks and the banks accidentally lent it all, which is why we have a reserve. Now, this yet again was another reason that caused a major panic sell-off, sending Bitcoin down another 12% and Ethereum down another 32% from Friday to Monday morning. Now, Binance, what's even crazier, is the world's largest crypto exchange by trading volume also added it on Monday morning that it was also freezing Bitcoin withdrawals due to a stuck transaction causing a backlog. Shengpeng Zhao, the firm's CEO, tweeted that the fix would only take about 30 minutes, but then later said that the problem was going to take a bit longer to fix than his initial estimate. And Celsius, which actually has 1.7 million customers, made this announcement right after cryptos dropped over the weekend. So Hayden, how can we stop inflation and what can we do while the market is down? Is the government going to do anything to help us? Ah, well, those are great questions. At this point, the only thing we really can do as consumers is to just stop spending money or at least try and slow down. Hopefully you guys have tuned in to my previous videos and know that inflation is the result of higher consumer demand and lower supply of goods. So until we can fix not only the high consumer demand, but the supply chain shortage, we need to slow down on buying unnecessary stuff. The more we as consumers spend, the higher we will see inflation go, as well as the prices of all the things we want as well as need. You see, China is still having lockdowns further halting the supply chain, and the US still has a labor shortage to deal with. Even though the unemployment rate in the US is lower than where we were during the pandemic, it doesn't mean we're doing good. People are still not going back to work, and that's a problem for us. You see, the U.S. still has 11.3 million jobs that need to be filled, and we don't have enough people willing to do it. And China is still having major lockdowns in Shanghai due to COVID. Yeah, they're still doing that. I feel like a lot of people don't realize this, and this is causing millions of people in China to stay home and not go to work further slowing down the supply chain for them as well as slowing down our supply chain since we rely so heavily on Chinese products. Now, some people are even starting to believe that corporate is just raising prices because they can and because we're in a capitalist society. And unfortunately, it's true. A lot of companies are doing exactly that. They're literally raising prices higher than what's needed to cover inflation, and they're doing it because consumer demand is so strong and people just keep spending money not looking at the prices. Corporations are literally taking the opportunity to gouge prices more than they could before, which is squeezing consumers and supercharging inflation, also known as a new term, greedflation. What's crazy is the shipping industry seems to be on the top of the list for exploiting the supply chain to breach contracts and jack up their rates for international and major shipping imports. The five largest container shipping companies collectively made profits of more than $64 billion last year, an increase of $41 billion from the year prior in 2020. And this year for 2022, container shipping carriers are on track to log some three hundred billion dollars in profits before taxes and interest, a massive increase from the prior year. Yet again, another reason we need to slow down on spending. As hard as this might be for us individuals to do, the feds will be enforcing new interest rate hikes by some 50, maybe even 75 basis points this month, as well as in July and September to try to curb the consumer spending, which clearly we're having a problem doing by ourselves. Now, 30 year mortgages are currently at 5.75% with the feds plan to obviously keep raising rates by 50 to maybe 75 basis points a month, I would not be surprised if we see a 30-year mortgage rate closer to maybe 7% by the end of the year, which is pretty scary because we haven't been there in a long time. Now, we'll also probably see personal loans, car loans, and credit card interest rates continue to rise by the end of this year as well. So guys, all in all, I've already said this countless of times, but we as consumers need to stop spending money. And as investors, we need to endure the drop and not panic sell our positions. Drop Drops like this rarely happen in the stock market, and historically, we always recover higher. So look at this as an investment opportunity to buy the dip later on down the road. And speaking for myself, I personally plan a dollar cost average down my portfolio over the next six to 12 months in hopes to buy close to the bottom in anticipation for the market to turn around. Not only that, I'm making sure that I have an emergency fund to cover myself in case of any issues for about six to even 12 months in time. With that being said, that about wraps up today's video. Make Make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, turn on post notifications, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.